Giant snakes are, well, giant, but are they dangerous? It turns out it's a very simple yes or no question. So what's the answer? I bet you think I'm gonna make you sit here for 12 minutes before I answer, but the answer is yes. Big snakes can be dangerous in the same way that a large dog could be dangerous. But you wouldn't bat an eye if your five-year-old was hanging out with a giant Labrador or a Newfoundland or something giant like that, right? A dog species? Well, it's the same thing with snakes. You don't fear them, just respect them. Every animal that is big enough to hurt you you have to respect. So what exactly is a giant snake? What makes a snake giant? Well, it's subjective. To me, I would say anything over 10 or maybe 12 feet is a giant. And that's where we get into territory where if they wanted to or if they made a accident, they could definitely harm you. And I wanna be very clear about that because no snake wants to hurt you for the sake of hurting you. The reasons that you're gonna get hurt by a snake are really three, well, this is the two, but three main reasons. The first one is a food bite where they think that you're food and of course they're gonna to try to hurt you if you're food, they need you to die to eat you if you're food. But they're doing this by mistake. They don't want to eat humans. In no part of the world do snakes prey on humans by choice. And we're gonna go over how to make sure this never ever happens to you. The other two reasons are, one is a defensive bite or a, or a laceration. So this is where their teeth are going to actually lacerate you like basically a knife would do. And this is something where it's not super common. It's pretty easily avoided. And then the third reason that they could hurt you is if they're trying to hold on onto you and they hold on too tight in a very vulnerable area. Now, this is kind of even sketchy a bit, holding it around my neck like this. The main thing, and I'll say it right off the bat before we even get into it, always make sure that there is someone else in the room with you if you are holding a giant snake. My rule is 10 feet. Any snake over 10 feet, I've got Michelle in the same room. Say hi so they don't think I'm lying. There you go. So we've got somebody in the room just in case. And what it really comes down to is body language. Now this comes down to experience. So this is why I always say most snakes, if you wanna get something that is an intermediate as your first snake, as long as you do the research, you're okay. But with a giant snake, I don't think that's the case because you don't know how to read body language because you've never had a snake before. So having a giant snake and learning that way probably isn't the greatest idea. The other thing is you keep seeing him, he's trying to hold onto my neck. I don't let him do that. And Michelle knows how to unwrap him if it were to get a little bit sketchy. <laughs> it's okay, God. <laughs> and what I mean by body language, just a kind of brief explanation. If you open the glass and it kind of looks at you like that, if it's like very fast tongue flicks, if it looks like it wants food, don't pick your snake up because you might be the prey item that they're looking for. If a snake is hungry because snakes are ambush predators, they're not kind of checking it out like, hmm, can I eat? They're just, they strike first and ask questions later. So if you know how to read a snake's behavior and you know that your snake is hungry, don't pick it up. If you can't read this behavior, well, you shouldn't have a big snake. Now, if anything were to happen, we'll get off this food bite topic in a second because it's probably the most easily avoided one. But if you take the snake out like this, you know it's not hungry anymore and you're good to go. If for whatever reason you did get bit and it's a food bite and it starts to coil you, make sure you've got somebody in the room that knows how to uncoil it. Grab it from the head or from the tail most likely, which they're gonna try to tuck. But get the tail, unwrap it, bing, bang, boom, you're safe. And then put your snake back because it wants to eat and uh, it's not a good time to handle it if it wants to eat. Other really obvious things too are if it wants to strike you defensively, it's hissing at you, it's huffing, it's puffing, it's kind of est up in that very common, I mean, if you have a snake, you know what this looks like, it's the defensive pose. Also, they're very difficult to film with, if you didn't know. So if you think your snake is being defensive, if your snake feels threatened or you think so, don't hold that snake, basically. And the third one, I'm talking about freak accidents here. This happens sometimes with say boas, which will wanna hold on because they're kind of a semi-arboreal snake, or even things like Burmese pythons, where they'll just hold on to you too tight. And if it gets a hold of your neck for too long, too tight, it doesn't mean to hurt you. It's just, that is something that can happen. Because when it's holding on to you like a tree, trees don't pass out if they don't get oxygen. You will. Now all these common sense, and I'm gonna call them common sense rules for handling big snakes, 
Or the same with handling a dog. Respect it. Don't jump on the dog. Don't rip its tail off. Don't bite its ears, you know? It's not cute when you see those pictures of those kids laying on the dog and trying to tease the dog. Eventually, it's going to not have a good day and it's going to let you know that it's not having a good day. And the same thing with snakes or any big animal. Treat them with respect. Put some respect on my name. That's it. You don't have to fear them. Don't be afraid of them. And when I say that they're dangerous, I mean that they're potentially dangerous. They're not inherently dangerous. I'm paying attention to you. I've got someone here. I feel calm. I feel safe. And I feel very comfortable. I'm very relaxed handling this snake, even though he is 13 feet long and I am five and a half feet long. So the simple answer is yes. I mean, they can be for sure dangerous, but again, so can any large animal. Now, with that said, with the disclaimer out there, are you going to have issues handling a snake if you know how to handle a snake and it's a big one? Well, no. If you can read a ball python's body language, you're probably gonna be able to read a Burmese python's body language too. Reticulated pythons are very, very smart. A lot of the times when they do lash out, and I say lash out as kind of a ridiculous way of putting it, it's because you don't know how to read the body language. It's just as simple as that. Another really good rule is don't have food around because these animals, especially Burmese pythons and reticulated pythons, have amazing food drives, which I like because unlike ball pythons, they never go off food, or in my experience, it's very uncommon. The problem with it is if they think that something is food, they smell food, and they see something move, which could be you, then, I mean, like, you might be their meal, you know? Well, they're gonna fail. They're not gonna get you down there because it would take a mighty big snake to do that, and snakes don't wanna eat humans anyway. We taste disgusting. So if you're asking, should I get a big snake, a giant snake. Really, the only person that can answer that is you. And I'm sure you'll ask in the comments section, I've got a boa and I've got a ball python and his name is Jimmy and he's a really good guy. Should I get, I don't know, I don't know. Are you ready for something like this? Do you have someone in your house who is comfortable handling a snake or at very least rescuing you if you were to need it, which is super uncommon? Are you comfortable with the idea that these snakes do get huge, they do get big, they need a giant enclosure, and if they hold on to you, are you ready to feel what that feels like? That's a dumb way of putting it. If they hold on to you and they are hug machines is what they are, are you going to feel comfortable with that? Are you going to be able to stay calm if they start to squeeze you a little bit too tight? Not maliciously, of course, because they don't do that. Are you gonna be able to stay calm and not freak out? That's the other thing too, because you don't wanna get a big snake and then not want a big snake. Because if you get yourself a big snake and you all of a sudden don't want it, guess what? Big snakes are really difficult to rehome sometimes, especially if you live in an area where there's not a lot of people, because if there's not a lot of people, there's not gonna be a lot of snake people, because guess what? We're kind of strange. Most people aren't snake people like us. So make sure you know what you're getting yourself in for and you feel comfortable with it as well. Something to ease your nerves a little bit is big snakes like this, they don't start like this. Are you huffing and puffing at me now? Big snakes this size, they huff and puff, by the way. It's just part Burmese python thing. They start off tiny. You remember Thunder, right? She's kind of big now, but she started off really small. When I got her, she was like 300 grams, which is smaller than even a sub-adult ball python. So the answer to the question is they can be dangerous, but likely won't be if you know what you are doing. Just basic etiquette, get a little bit of experience, maybe even volunteer somewhere that has big snakes. I'm sure that everybody with a big snake collection, if you go to a facility that has big snakes and you say, hey, do you mind if I come and like scoop the poop a couple days a week? They will, they will have a neck injury from nodding their head so vigorously to say yes, absolutely. And you're going to gain confidence that way, which is the most important part. If you do not have confidence when you're holding snakes, bad things are gonna happen to you. Same thing if you drive a car, if you are not confident driving, please go home and park your car. If you are not confident holding snakes, do not get a large snake because that's when bad things happen. And about that read their body language thing, he's trying to get away from me. He's now huffing and puffing. He's trying to get around the tripod. Please don't do that. So I'm going to let him crawl back into his enclosure now and we're just going to kind of summarize what we've learned here today about why they're actually not dangerous. Well, they can be, but they're, they're not really. But I'll tell you what, big snakes are special. They feel special. They, this is kind of like a good scarf. Maybe not the warmest scarf, but it's a good scarf. It feels special. There's nothing like it. If you've never had the opportunity to hold a big snake, I highly recommend it. Go to someone's house who has one in a safe environment. Don't go to like some sketch bag that I, I got 
10 retics, maybe like not that guy's house, but go to someone's house who has one, go to someone's collection who has one. If you get an opportunity to go somewhere like the Reptarium or Nerds Facility or Snake Discovery or somewhere like that where they've got giant snakes and you can be supervised handling them, that is the best place to get yourself a little bit of experience before you get one. And lastly, which one do you think I should get? I'm sure I'm gonna get this comment. And I love this comment because I like talking to people about good options for good snakes. I did a whole video right here, the best five giant snakes. But to summarize, of the giant snakes, I would put them in this order from best to worst. And just in my own opinion, and I'll tell you why. Burmese pythons, number one, because they get big, but they don't get like reticulated python or anaconda big. And in my opinion, and the opinion of I'm sure a lot of people, they are kind of like the gentle giants of the snake world. If you didn't want a berm, maybe you want a reticulated python. I personally think those are also amazing. I think just their head structure is a little bit different, their teeth structure is a little bit different. And in my opinion, and this isn't even like, there's no science to back this, I've just seen more people uh, have bad experiences with reticulated pythons and berms. And then if you wanted something different after that, maybe you want an anaconda or an African rock python if you really don't care about it being huffy and puffy, or scrub pythons, which are another really underrated snake, which I would consider a giant snake. There's just so many options. <laughs> There's just so many options, but to me, I think berms are the king of cool when it comes to giant snakes. What do you think? I know this video was kind of all over the place. It's actually really difficult to concentrate when you're wrangling a 13 foot python, even when you have help. So I wanna know in the comment section below, do you agree with what I said? Do you think that they're dangerous? Do you understand what I mean when I say they could be, but they're probably not going to be? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you don't mind, hit like, hit subscribe, takes you nothing but a few seconds of your time, but helps this channel so much, and Kratos told me that he wants you to do it. And uh, Patreon, you guys are freaking amazing, and you know about that really cool trip and who I'm going with in a few weeks. It's coming up, it's in less than two weeks. Holy cow, I'm gonna find some really cool big snakes there. Anyway, let me know in the comment section below where you think, like how many comments, I'm like, okay, that's enough. Because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Thursday. Or actually, it's Monday, because Today's Thursday. Y'all, y'all, y'all finished or y'all done? I ain't got no more talking.